I'm sure most of you are like me and you fantasized about having superpowers. However, in retrospect, I thank the good Lord that he didn't give me any because I would probably abuse the hell out of them. I don't have the maturity and restraint of somebody, say, like, oh, Superman. I would probably just go nuts and kill anyone who pissed me off. I would never be a role model like he... Well, this is awkward. To give back to you guys, the Extreme Channel is giving away this giant Goro statue from PCS for our 20,000 sub giveaway. If you want to know how to win this, I'll tell you a little bit later in this video. Hey everybody, thanks for tuning in. Today we're looking at Superman Dark Metal Knights. Nope, wait, reverse that. Now if you're unfamiliar with what this is, this is obviously not your normal Superman. So Dark Metal Knights, wait, reverse that. Dark Knight Metal is a DC comic series that essentially evolves around Batman. Now I could get into a lot of detail, but it's crazy as hell. There's some metals that open up the multiverse and a dark universe and there's different forms of Batman. Batman merged with Joker, Batman merged with Green Lantern, and actually Prime One Studios, one of the biggest licensed manufacturer of DC statues, is actually doing an entire line of these. And coincidentally, even though I ordered this about two years ago, they announced their own version of this Superman, which we're going to talk about today, as well as do an in-depth review of this custom piece. Now essentially, this Superman is not the Superman you and I know and love. It's a Superman from a different universe. You can see he's kind of evil, he's killed some people. I don't wanna get into it, it's all this drama, but go ahead and check those out. I wish they would actually put out an omnibus of most of the Dark Knight, I said it right, Dark Knight Metal series. But it's pretty cool to see Superman using his powers, as I said in the intro, kinda of like we would. So let's just kick off this review, and we're gonna start with concept as we always do. And this is where it's completely different and completely unique. Now, if you're not somebody who likes multiverses or different versions, then you're going to hate this statue. However, I like it because it's so different. So on this base here, it is a rock base, and the base is littered with skulls to insinuate that Superman actually killed them. And what's cool is the skulls are actually a little bit different sizes. They're clearly all human, so I think that's some good creativity on their part. And in my mind, I kind of like to think he was like Anakin Skywalker. Then as you move up Superman standing on this mound of skulls where he's very victorious, he has some weird ass clothing. Now this is very true to the comic version of the Dark Knight series. At least the first version of him. He comes back later with long hair and it's really weird. But it's almost a mix between his traditional costume, layering of armor, and almost like gothic steampunk stuff. So I'm not really a huge fan of that. I like the fact that it's different and it clearly shows that he's evil. Like I said, he has spikes coming out of his costume. He has skulls all over. You can see he's actually holding Batman's cowl. That's a switch out option we're gonna talk about to insinuate he killed Batman. And the whole Dark Knight Metal series revolves around Batman. Batman's the main character. There's different versions of Batman. He's the key to stopping all the crazy stuff that's going on. But as you move up further, like I said, one unique thing is he actually has armor on which I don't know enough about the Dark Knight Metal comics of why that is. So there is some information on the concept I don't know. The particular portrait, it's one of four that I'm displaying right now, he's showing his heat vision and he looks pissed. He's gritting his teeth, I very much like it. It looks like an evil Superman, which is what I wanted out of this statue when I ordered it. So overall, I actually give the concept a four out of five. Now a lot of people, while they haven't released the Prime One Studios, they've only showed the prototype, People are wondering how that's different. So let's talk about that in design. So first thing we're gonna talk about is how different that is. First of all, to my knowledge, the Prime One Studios only has one or two portraits where this has four. Second, the Prime One Studios actually has a fabric or mixed media cape where this is sculpted. Third, I don't believe the Prime One Studios has a switch out where it's holding Batman's cowl. I quite like that. And lastly, I'm fairly certain the Prime One Studios version is one-third scale to stay in line with all the other pieces they're doing, where this is one-fourth, meaning it's four times smaller than what a real version of Superman would be. One-third is actually bigger, even though three is smaller. Remember that from grade school fractions. But check out the unboxing and assembly of this guy. One box, and uh, it actually wasn't too heavy, which is kind of nice. Now, the art box is very shiny, very sparkly. Standard custom black foam you typically see and it consisted of two layers the first layer had the cape and most of the switch out options here it is with the wax paper removed and then the second layer had the body the torso and the legs were separate pieces here it is with the wax paper removed and the base
Now, before we look at all the switch out options, let's take the dimensions. At the widest point, he's about 19 inches. So it is a wide piece for one fourth scale. However, it's not that deep. You're looking at about 15 inches or so. And the tallest part is just under 24 inches, so he should fit in most display cases. Now for the switch out options, how I have them displayed is how I plan to have them displayed. I actually put the rest of them back in the box. So first on his right hand, instead of holding Batman's cowl, it can just be a fist. But why would you want just a fist? I want Batman's cowl, so that's the other switch out option for that. For the portraits, you actually have four options that are kind of divided into two categories. First category, where the spit curl isn't as evident and it's actually parted to his left, your right. This, I'm not a fan of this portrait, that's why I put it back in the box. But you have essentially that same portrait, almost identical, and the heat vision is coming out of his eyes. Then you have more of the spit curl version with the hair tousled to the right. No heat vision coming out. Again, not a huge fan of this portrait. And then you have the one I have displayed where he's then you have the one I have displayed where he's baring his teeth and the same hairstyle. Now during paint and sculpt, we'll take some close-up video of each of those to show it to you. But I like the fact they gave a lot of different options. Everything fit together fine, no issues. You know, interesting, the studio that made this also made this Power Rangers piece right here, which you guys know I'm a huge fan of. You know, and at the time I ordered this a couple years ago, I was getting like a whole line of five different Supermans in the one four scale. I'm not really doing that anymore, so I'm not sure where I'm gonna put it. That's what she said. <laughs> but regarding the design, I like a sculpted cape instead of fabric. I think the design's a five out of five. I mean, I'm really impressed. There's nothing wrong with it. I can't find one single flaw. But I can find some flaws with the paint and sculpt. I'm not as happy as I thought I'd be, but it's not bad. Let's take a look at what I'm talking about. So while we briefly looked at the three different portraits, I wanna highlight them. Uh, this will be the one I display, but kind of your standard Superman right here. Uh, like I said, this is more of, uh, he's a bit fuller in the face as a standard spit curl coming down. You can definitely see a little bit of paint uh, issue right there where it connects. Uh, the details are fine. Uh, I do like the fact that the uh, eyebrows are almost individually sculpted, kind of those piercing blue eyes, just very serene look on his face, which I do think fits the character well. I like the blue highlights in his hair. This is evident in every single piece. I think it helps the uh, piece flow a little bit more. But you almost see some uh, imperfections in the paint on that. Then the other one where his spit curls kind of on the other side here, and here he doesn't have that full of a face. So I think it more matches this guy right here because the spit curl is uh, coming to the same side. Um, some of the same uh, specifics when it comes to, you know, kind of chunks in the paint and the hair here. Here, hair here, so the same or where it uh, contours to the body. I do like the complexion though, I think it's good. I like how the eyes are a little bit more red, these very uh, you know, piercing eyes. They may be decals. So not really a big fan of these portraits so far. And here's one, very similar to the first one we looked at, but the eyes have the uh, heat vision. And I really like the effect they did, uh, that it is uh, you know, kind of pulsating out of his eyes and even his eyes are damaged for a second when that happens. So I think that's a really good effect. But what they really did different on this one is not only, like I said, a little bit skinnier face, but they uh, really had some venation from that heat vision coming out. And then his eyebrows are crossed much more, and then you have the teeth showing. So I think that shows to the anger. His teeth are a little bit too white for me, and I don't like the gaps on the sides, but I still like the skin complexion. You still see those blue highlights in the hair, and I like how it's kind of all over the place. I think that tells a, a good story with this piece. Now the concrete on the bottom, first I like the fact that there is no sub base. Um, I think it's done fine. Uh, it has a little bit of a glossy effect that doesn't really suit it well. Uh, the different colors, the browns, grays, and blacks that they've added in there look good. And I'm not focusing specifically on the skulls, but I like how the rocks are jutting out. Skulls look great. I think they did a really nice job. The quantity, um, the size, I think. A lot of times skulls are underscaled. I don't think they did so here, even though there are a few smaller ones. Uh, the colors they used on them and how they're um, buried within the rock, I think that's that's done really well. And Superman's outfit, and remember, this is not your typical Superman, so he's got this uh, you know, 
metal vibe going on. You see the spikes everywhere. You're gonna see them on his feet, on his arms, on his sides. But the boots look okay. Uh, it's too monotonous with the colors. So the different layering of the sculpt really doesn't look good with that solid red color and the black shading on it. It's just something that, that I'm not digging very much. It's almost like they wanted to go for a dirty effect and they didn't get it. And then when you move to him, so he's got a few different layers on him. Like he has knee pads, which I'm not sure why Superman would need knee pads, unless Batman made him his bitch. But I like how these are a little bit uh, more metallic, color painted with purple. And then you have some layering on some pants here. I'm not sure what's going on here because it's a different uh, color and texture than the rest of the pants. Over here he has a strap that looks really nice. Uh, they did a great job with the paint on this. It's a different color blue, but still there's a lot of blue on this. And the anatomy, he's very bulky overall. Uh, so not your really slim and trim Superman, don't get me wrong, he's still in much better shape than me. I like the belt. The gold is appearing a lot brighter in the camera than it is in real life, but I like how it's scarred up, the red belt on the side. Then. A lot of detail in his torso here. Like I like the zipper, uh, the other belt right here, the straps on the side, and again, the, the colorization. So the torso looks fantastic with the Superman symbol. You see some cuts in there. Um, uh, this gold is more similar to what this looks like. And maybe it's because of that uh, texturized pattern on there, but a lot of wrinkles and a lot of detail into this specific piece. And as you move down, you know, you don't typically see Superman wearing gloves because you would think he didn't need them. But uh, here he has the spiked uh, dog collar wrists and kind of almost some uh, reinforced gloves here. And again, his suit's kind of torn up and it's padded. Then the uh, uh, red skulls on his shoulder. Here's Batman's cowl down here. It looks okay. I'm not a huge fan of it. I like how torn it is. Uh, it just seems something's really off about it and I can't quite put my finger on it. I like what they did with this cape. So this is really the only bright colors you see, but still they added a lot of shading in between there, that black shading coming down. It's all torn up at the bottom, but you know, I've always been under the impression that if it's right next to Kal-El, uh, it's indestructible as well. Some more spikes coming out up there. So almost too much going on for Superman statue, but that is the character. So I appreciate they stay true to that. Um, but it's not as impressive as I, as I hoped it would be. So like I said, it's nothing that really blows up my skirt. It's not bad, but uh, I think a lot of people will be pleasantly surprised. However, I'm speculating, and I could be totally wrong, as I am almost every hour, says Mrs. X, is I think Prime One Studios will be better on the sculpt and a little bit better on the paint. I think the paint on this is better than the sculpt. But I think both the paint and sculpt have the same score on this statue, and I think it's a three out of five, which I wanna clarify. If you've never watched the channel before, or you never paid attention, three is a good score, it's you get what you pay for. Because when we're paying a lot of money for these pieces, we expect it to be what we paid for, which is a great transition to the value of this piece. $788, I believe, was the retail price or the original pre-order price. So for a one four scale piece, that is very realistic. That's actually cheaper than like Prime One Studios. It's about in line with Sideshow. It did come from overseas. It took a month to get here and I think shipping was like $200 in that range. I don't even remember anymore. It's just too much, however too much it is. So realistically, even compared to an XM Studios piece, this is cheaper and I, they made either 40 or 45. It probably said on the base, I can't remember because I actually unboxed it uh, like three days ago. But I think the value is pretty good on this. Like I said, I'm pretty confident the Prime One Studios one is one third, so there will still be a lot of demand for this piece, especially if some companies start making some other one four scale Dark Knight metal pieces. So I think the value is actually a four out of five. Now, does this have the X factor? Is it a five out of five statue? You know, a long time ago, someone yelled at me for my, my score and they're like, that's your opinion. It's like, yes, that's all these scores are. They're my opinion. I'm not an expert. I'm just sharing the art that I love with you guys. But my opinion is influenced by a lot of things. It could be the drugs that I'm on right now. It could be my excitement for the piece. And my excitement for this piece isn't as much because I'm not really collecting this line anymore. So as a disclaimer, that's probably affecting the score I'm going to give it. It's definitely not a five out of five statue. I see how some people could give it a four out of five. For me, it's a three out of five overall. 
It's not my favorite piece I've unboxed, but it's not bad at all. I do like it. If I was the amazing Superman collector, Stuart Murray, he would probably give this a four out of five because Superman is his thing and this would look amazing in his collection. Speaking of which, you wanna make sure you subscribe to the channel because I have an amazing Superboy piece coming uh, to review on the table that I'm then shipping to Stuart Murray. To win this Goro statue, first thing you gotta do is make sure you've liked this video, you've actually subscribed to the channel, and you've hit that bell notification. Second thing is leave a comment below and make sure it's a witty, entertaining, or funny comment because when we hit 20,000 subscribers, I'm gonna pick a random video and the comment that has the most likes on it will be the winner of this Goro statue. So make sure your comment is entertaining to others and entertaining to Mr. X because if I like it, I'm actually gonna pin it to the tops to help you get more likes. Kind of a funny story, but hit that picture of me on the way out if you don't like me or if you wanna subscribe, both work. Drop me a comment, drop me a like, and I will talk to you guys very soon. Take care.